Hello and welcome to Learning with Lisa. In today's video we are learning all about coastline habitats. While you are watching keep a look out for the little seagull. See if you can tell me how many times he appears at the end of the video. A coastline is an area where the land meets the sea. There are many different habitats along the coast including beaches, sand dunes, estuaries, rock poles, cliffs, coves and salty water. The coastline is a very harsh place for plants and animals to live. Salty spray from waves, strong winds from sun, rain and changing tides are all extreme weather conditions you might experience here. Have you ever visited a beach? There are many different types. Some are sandy, others are muddy, some are rocky and some have shingle. The coastline is constantly changing as water, wind and ice wear away the rocks. This is called erosion. The continuous force from the sea wears away rock. This can lead to sea caves, arches, bays and coves. Sometimes it is so bad that houses on top of cliff edges topple into the sea. Cliff tops are very important places for many different seabirds. Two of my favourite birds are gannets and puffins. Puffins and gannets return each year to the same place to build their nests and have their young. Did you know that gannets actually return to the same nest each year? That's amazing, isn't it? Look how cute the puffin looks in its nest. With so many birds living together, coastlines can be very noisy places. They can be quite smelly too. Poof! Let us look at sandy beaches in more detail. Lugworms live beneath the water. You probably won't be able to see them, but when the tide goes out, their holes and worm casts can be seen in the sand. Many sandy beaches have sand dunes. These are hills or mounds of sand formed by the wind. Spiky marram grass is often found growing on the dunes. If you are lucky, you might even see a lizard or two. Shingle beaches are different to sandy beaches. These are beaches made up of small pebbles and different sorts of plants grow here. Many different sea creatures such as seals and harbour porpoises are found in the sea close to the shoreline. Dolphins can sometimes be seen as well. As the tide goes out, pools of seawater are left behind and settle amongst uneven rocks. Here, you might find creatures such as crabs and sea anemones. Shelled animals, such as mussels and barnacles, attach themselves firmly to the rocks too. Have you ever tried rock poling? It's great fun! Let's return to my two favourite birds. Firstly, let's look in more detail at puffins. Puffins are often named sea parrots or sometimes clowns of the sea. Atlantic puffins have white and black feathers and a large parrot-like beak. Their beak changes colour during winter. It loses its bright orange colour and becomes a dull grey. Puffins are actually quite small. They are only about 25 centimetres in length. 
Puffins fly out to sea for part of the year and in spring they return to the coast and build nests. They dig out burrows using their sharp beaks on grassy banks or in rocky crevices. The nests are lined with feathers and grass, ready for the female puffin to lay her eggs. Puffins make many visits out to sea to catch sand eels for themselves and their young. If you are lucky, you might see a puffin making trips back and forth with a mouthful of sand eels. Sadly, puffins are under threat from overfishing. We know that puffins need to eat sand eels to survive, but warmer seas due to climate change has led to less sand eels living close to our shores. Hundreds of thousands of sand eels are also taken out of the North Sea each year by fishermen. All of this means less food for the puffins. Gannets are much larger birds. They have a wingspan of up to two meters. Their wings are long and pointed. Adult gannets have white and black feathers and a yellow head. Gannets start out life brown and white, but as they get older, their color changes. Many sea creatures are also under threat from pollution. Oil spills can make birds sick and destroy their waterproof feathers, which are necessary for their survival. Before we look at what we can do to help protect the coastline, let me tell you a true story about Albert the Albatross. Albert is a truly magnificent bird. Gannets are large birds, but he, he is even larger. What makes him truly fantastic is that he is believed to be the only one in the Northern Hemisphere. The world is divided up into two, the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. So Albert is the only bird of his kind in the Northern half of the world. How amazing is that? Albatross normally live in the South. No one knows how he got here. Some people think he got caught up in heavy winds and got blown here. Others think he caught a ride on a boat. But people believe that it is, is highly unlikely he will ever return to the Southern Hemisphere again. Albert seems happy living with the Gannets, but I think it's a little sad that he has no other albatrosses as friends. What do you think? People travel a very long way to take photos of Albert. For the last few years, he has returned each spring to the same cliff with his gannet friends. Sadly, the coastline is under threat from pollution from farming, industrial waste, sewerage and us. Plastic is causing a very big problem for animals that live at the coast. Plastic litter is sometimes found in the tummies of dead sea creatures. Let's look at what we can do to help. Well, we could take part in a litter pick at our local beach. Why not put on a pair of rubber gloves and pick up any litter you find? Make sure you put things like bottles, cans and plastic bags into rubbish bags or bins so they don't harm our wildlife. Try using reusable water bottles instead of plastic bottles. This way, a plastic one has less chance of ending up in the sea. It's very important that balloons are not released into the air, as when they land, wildlife such as coastal birds and fish can get tangled up in them. Lastly, when you visit the beach, take all your rubbish home with you. It's now time for our quiz, but before we do that, 
Can you tell me how many times the little seagull has appeared? I counted him ten times. Are you ready for your first question? What is another name for a puffin? Sea pigeon? Sea parrot? Parrot pigeon? Another name for a puffin is a sea parrot. Which large bird is white and black with a yellow head? Gannet? Puffin? Seagull? The answer is Gannet. Which one of these might you find in a rock pool? Whale? Shark? Crab? You could find a crab in a rock pool. Which creature is under threat due to the overfishing of sand eels? Puffin? Dolphin, sand lizard. The answer is puffin. What are sand dunes? Sand castles, a type of seagull, a hill of sand. Sand dunes are sandy hills. How can you help look after the beach? Take part in a litter pick? Feed seagulls chips? Release blooms? You could take part in a litter pick to look after the beach. What sort of bird is Albert? A gannet? A seagull? An albatross? Albert is an albatross. What is a threat to all marine life? Seagulls? oil spills, boats. The answer is oil spills. Let's look at some photos I took when I visited the coast. I hope you enjoy them. We've now finished learning all about coastal habitats. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. It would be great if you subscribed too, so you don't miss out on all my other videos. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now. Bye.